Kiev from times of old rightfully carries the name of mother of Russian cities. A thousand years ago the entrance to the city was decorated by golden gates. A modern reconstruction allows to judge the full extent of splendor of the capital of medieval Russia. In the 11th century Kiev, then ruled by Prince Yaroslav the Wise, becomes one of the largest centers of civilization in the Christian world. The St. Sophia Cathedral and the first library in Russia were built during this time. In addition, the city numbered around 400 churches, 8 markets, and more than 50,000 residents. By comparison, in Novgorod, the second largest and most populous of the cities of Russia, there were 30,000 residents. London, Hamburg, and Danzig had 20,000 each. Kiev was one of the most prosperous centers of trade and craftsmanship in Europe. Legends and tales are closely intertwined with the history of Kiev. A folk story tells of St. Andrew, one of the Apostles of Christ, having come here in the first century bringing the Gospel to the Slavs inhabiting the banks of the Dnieper. Among the most revered names of the Enlighteners of Russia, there is Princess Olga, one of the first Christian rulers of Kiev, whose grandson Vladimir brought forth religious reforms and baptized Russia in the year 988, as well as the creators of the Russian alphabet Cyril and Methodius. Also here on the square near the St. Sophia Cathedral, there stands tall a monument to Bogdan Khmelnytsky, thanks to whom the lands of today's Ukraine were liberated from the Polish rule and united with Russia. The cultural and political division of the two parts of the ancient Rus, the Moscow Kingdom and Kievshina, lasted several centuries. This was the time when the differences and peculiarities of the two fraternal peoples that once were the single people of Rus were formed. The first settlements on the site of contemporary Kiev appeared between 1500 to 2000 years ago. According to legend, at the end of 5th beginning of the 6th centuries of the modern era, the brothers Ki, Shok and Kharif and their sister Libid grew fond of a spot on the banks of the Dnieper and founded a city on the steep right bank. They called it Kiev in honor of the eldest brother. The location of the city was chosen fortuitously. The tall banks of the Dnieper served as a good defense from attacks of the nomadic tribes. For greater security, Kievan princes erected their palaces and churches on the high Starokievsky hill. The traders and tradesmen lived near the Dnieper on the site of modern-day Padol. After the death of Prince Vladimir Mnamach in 1125, the more or less united Kievan state began to fracture. Towards the middle of the 12th century, the Kievan Rus disintegrated into the multitude of independent principalities. This was a situation used well by the external enemies. In the fall of 1240, countless hordes of Batuhan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, showed up at the walls of Kiev. The Mongols managed to take the city after a protracted and bloody battle. Thousands of Kievans were killed and the greater portion of the city was razed. The history of Kiev entered a long and gloomy period of decline. Almost 100 years, Mongol Tatars ruled the Ukrainian lands. Still, Kiev managed to preserve its ancient artisan trade and cultural traditions and remain an important political and economic center. In the 14th century, Kievshina becomes a stronghold of the nascent Ukrainian ethnos. In the 15th century, Kiev received Magdeburg law, which provided much greater independence to the city in the matters of international trade and significantly increased the rights of the city classes, artisans, traders, and the petty bourgeois. In 1659, after the signing of the Union of Lublin, Poland and Lithuania combined to form a single state known as Rzeczpospolita, and gradually solidified their control of Ukraine. The cruelty and arbitrary rule of the foreigners led to many revolts of the Ukrainian people. In 1648, the inhabitants of Ukraine began armed struggle against the Polish masters. At the head of the revolt stood the headman of the Ukrainian Cossacks, Bogdan Khmelnytsky. Soon, a large part of Ukraine, including Kiev, was liberated. Having come up against the necessity of fighting on several fronts, with the Polish and Lithuanians in the west, the Crimean Khan and the Turkish Sultan in the south, Khmelnytsky turned to the Russian Tsar for military aid. The union of Russia and Ukraine was finalized in 1654 in Pereyaslav. Since that time, and until 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed, the fates of the Kievan and the Muscovite lands of the once united ancient Russian state were closely linked and intertwined. In many respects, these ties persist to this day. The Kievan land has given Russia and the world an entire constellation of spectacular and unique talents. 
writers, scientists, musicians and composers, architects and artists, spiritual and religious thinkers, cultural notables, actors. Here, on the Alexeyevsky descent, is the museum house of the world-famous writer Mikhail Bulgakov, whose brilliant novel, Master and Margarita, has been translated into many of the world's languages. It is also here that the events of the revolutionary times and the uncertain period of the Civil War, described by the writer in the novel The White Guard and the play Days of the Turbans, took place. The Black Cat Behemoth is one of the most colorful characters created by the author in Master and Margarita. A great-great-granddaughter of his still lives here. She knows many secrets but is not in a hurry to share them with the museum visitors. All knowledge must be earned. Modern Kyiv, the capital of independent Ukraine, formerly a republic of the USSR and now a sovereign state, appears as a quaint mixture of old buildings, partially preserved since ancient and medieval times, as well as Soviet architecture and new construction, such as the ubiquitous McDonald's and transnational hotels such as the Hyatt chain. New times dictate new fashions and new tastes of the townspeople. However, on the whole, they stay the same. Their language, culture, and customs all were passed down from the ancestors of old, who lived here a thousand or two thousand years ago, and even earlier. No matter how much the exterior appearance and the daily life of Kiev's residents change, genetically and spiritually, they are still the same Slavs, the bearers of language and traditions of the ancient Rus, the inhabitants of Kiev, which rightfully is called the mother of Russian cities. <laughs>